How did evolution lead us to believe in gods or some kind of supernatural beings? I thought many people consider God to be a cultural concept. What could evolution have anything to do with it? If only a few societies had gods, maybe it's the result of their unique cultures. But it is found in almost any culture throughout human history. Some cultures have one almighty God. Some cultures have many spirits. But they all basically believe in powerful supernatural beings. Since it's so universal, don't you think there should be some evolutionary basis for it? Some kind of human nature behind it? I guess you could say that. But you know, there are a great percentage of people who are atheists these days. Maybe it's not as universal as you say? I will answer that question, but first let me start with the main points. Okay, so what is the evolutionary reason many humans believe in gods? There was an evolutionary advantage, right? No. No? Many scientists think that, instead of it having evolutionary advantages, it is a byproduct of evolution. Byproduct? Humans obtain many mental skills and tendencies from evolution. These had their own evolutionary advantages, but accidentally resulted in belief of gods as a byproduct. Are you saying it wasn't the intended feature by evolution? Yes, metaphorically speaking. But strictly speaking, evolution doesn't have any intention. It just happens. You just assumed evolution, which is a non-human thing, has intentions. As I will explain later, this is an example of an instinctive tendency that leads to belief in gods. It was kind of a figure of speech, but okay. Belief in supernatural beings is a byproduct of these cognitive functions. Don't worry, I will explain these terms. These are the origin of ideas of supernatural beings like gods. These are why we tend to feel these ideas are intuitively right and tend to believe them. Let's explore how evolution created gods. Long time ago, a human hears a sound of leaves. It's probably nothing. A snake bites him and he dies. He's too stupid to live in prehistoric world. Another human hears a sound of leaves. I sense an animal. He runs and survives. This is called agency detection. Agency? Agency is something that moves and acts independently, like humans or animals. Okay, so this human has very good ears. He can distinguish the sound of a snake and the sound of wind. Now that's a snake. Oh, this sound is just wind. However, oh my, with only one mistake, he's dead. Too bad for him. Now here's a third human. Oh my God, there's a snake. Oh, there's another snake there. He's oversensitive. He sends snakes to every small sound, but he survived. Maybe nine out of 10 times he imagined snakes, but it was nothing. But when it really was a snake, he was always ready. This is called hyperactive agency detection. I see. If you mistake wind for a snake, nothing bad happens. But the other mistake can be very bad. It's like how fire alarms are purposely made to be very sensitive. People like him survived longer and passed down more genes. So, humans evolved to have this hyperactive agency detection. Humans are born to be oversensitive to the presence of something. I do remember many times feeling like there was something or somebody there, but it turned out to be nothing. So this sensitive human survived longer. However, since it's hyperactive, he overapplied agency detection to too many things. I feel there's someone in my house, but I can't see it. Thunder! There must be something causing it. Plague! There must be someone behind it. He detected agencies behind everything. Agency detection is working too much. Eventually, he imagined supernatural spirits and gods. When something happens, it is natural for humans to assume there is an agency behind it. Okay, that's how imaginary agencies appeared as a byproduct of hyperactive agency detection. Many scientists believe that this is the origin of supernatural beings. Here's the second evolutionary basis for belief in gods. Long time ago, humans were living in groups. Some humans couldn't understand each other very well. They couldn't cooperate well, and they kind of died away. Some other humans acquired a special ability, mind reading. This skill is called theory of mind. Is that a name of a skill? Sounds like a name of a theory. Theory of mind is the ability to understand and predict other people's minds. This is so natural you use it every day without noticing. You see people and think things like, Oh, she's hungry. The baby wants that toy. 
He's angry at the person. You can naturally predict other people's mental states and intentions. Now these humans could cooperate better and became highly social. Much more than ape tribes. Some apes have this ability too, by the way. Just not as sophisticated as humans. Humans better at this survived longer in social environment and passed down more genes. What does it have to do with belief in gods? Humans, however, overapplied this skill to too many things. Overapplied again. They often thought animals think and feel like humans do, even though animals are much more simple-minded. I know that feeling. I've also seen people sometimes even think that their car is angry at them when it's not working. The humans applied theory of mind to even more stuff. They heard the forest making sounds and thought, oh, the forest is singing. They saw a thunder and thought, whoever causing that thunder is angry at us. So they use theory of mind to force of nature or the supernatural beings imagined by agency detection. That's why gods and spirits are usually very human-like. There is an experiment that let people see circles and triangles move randomly. When they were asked to explain what they saw, many explained it as if these shapes had intentions. I guess that's why people imagined many human-like gods from looking at stars. There are more studies supporting this. People brain scanned to have strong theory of mind tend to be more religious. In contrast, autistic people is known to be not good at theory of mind. They tend to be less religious. The last evolutionary basis for gods is called promiscuous teleology. What does it mean? It is the tendency to assume things exist for a purpose and intention. Let me give you examples. Why does a fork exist? To use for eating? Right, a fork is designed for a purpose. Now, why do flowers exist? I don't know. It's just a result of random evolution. A child would say things like, to make the world pretty. What? Why do clouds exist? Primitive societies might say things like, to give us rain. This type of thinking is promiscuous teleology. People tend to assume things are designed for a purpose. Not just for man-made things like fork, but for everything. I see. Assuming purpose and intention behind everything is very religious way of thinking. I guess it's a natural result to imagine supernatural designers behind things. Especially children have tendencies for this way of thinking. This way of thinking diminishes as they grow up and learn better explanations about things. It seems that teleological thinking is the default way of thinking, and education reduces it. Adults may not believe flowers exist to make the world pretty, but studies show they can still have biases towards assuming purpose. Also, an experiment shows that adults tend to favor teleological explanations when they are not given enough time to think. I think this is one reason why atheists are increasing in modern society. Science and education suppress teleological thinking. But isn't teleology the result of religions, instead of religion being the result of it? People used to think so. But children who have not been taught about religion show tendencies for teleological thinking. Then why did we evolve that way? Well, first of all, seeing purpose and intention in people and their creations is obviously useful for survival, right? Extending this to nature can also be useful for survival. When you see a new animal with a horn, it's useful to instinctively think of the purpose of the horn. Maybe you can predict that it will try to stab you with it. I think seeing purpose in something is basically same as recognizing its main function. It's useful for survival to know that clouds exist to rain, fruits exist to feed us, and bears exist to kill us. Killing humans is not really the life's purpose of a bear. But for a human, that's all they need to know. It was more useful to know that clouds bring rain than to know the mechanism of how clouds form to exist. It sounds like a mental shortcut. I guess this way of thinking quickly lets you focus on what you need to know about something better than rigorous analysis. Maybe you could say that. So this tendency to assume things are designed for purpose was another reason humans believe in supernatural beings behind everything. I guess that's why there usually is a creator behind even the world itself. This was why humans evolved to have natural tendency to believe in supernatural beings like gods. It is a byproduct of these mental functions obtained through evolution. Hyperactive agency detection, theory of mind and promiscuous teleology. This is why people invented supernatural beings. This is also why the idea spread so well. The ideas fit well with the natural way of thinking. 
I thought this also explains why people like conspiracy theories. Something happens maybe by chance, but then people imagine some evil guy's intentions behind it. Maybe you could say they're similar. Lastly, I can briefly touch on another theory. Some think that belief in God is an adaptation with evolutionary advantages instead of a byproduct. If one believes in supernatural beings looking at you, one tends to act morally even when no one is seeing. This was good for survival because expulsion from tribe and execution were as dangerous as nature for humans. Other theories talk about the benefits of religion, such as fostering cooperation. But for today's topic, I tried to distinguish between the idea of supernatural beings and religious activities. So I won't dig deep into it. Yes, I do think religion can be a very good practice for people in society, like increasing morality, as you mentioned. So this was today's topic. Belief in God is an instinct that is a byproduct of evolution. Thank you for watching.